Has it ever happened to you that you got your brand new I2C device in the mail and you go and check your AliExpress listing and there's no I2C address? So now you can't really use your device no matter what it is. I mean, sure, you can build a little breadboard circuit and then upload a little bit of code and then this will spit out your I2C address, but then you're going to take this apart right away once you're done and the next time you order something weird from AliExpress, no address. And that's why I'm proud to be sponsored by PCBWay, so I can make projects like this that you can build up and put on your workbench and always have the I2C address of your sketchy Chinese modules. Let's take a look at this PCB and its features. So this board is based upon the RP2040 by Waveshare. It is a fantastic and inexpensive board, which will just slot into here. It also features the option to select either the internal 3.3 volt regulator from the RP or an external one right here, which is the AMS1117. You've got switchable uh, 5 volt and 3.3 volt output for the dual I2C scanning sockets, and it uses a almost one inch OLED to go here for the display. Another cool thing is as optional uh, stem QT slash quick connectors down here. If you're not comfortable soldering these, then don't install them. On top of that, it is made for hacking. So every single pin of your RP2040 zero uh, minus the row back here is broken out. And for future expansion, I have removed the copper from this area here. And so you can use an ESP32 S30 or C30 in its place. So here's a pair that I have prepared earlier, and as you can see, they have the optional Stemma QT and Quick Connectors, they have the optional uh, AMS1117 installed. So this is kind of what you're looking at. You've got either a spot to put an OLED here, I socketed mine in this case, and you pop the OLED, and then you have your connections right here. Or you can have some sort of remote mounting, so this one is just on the end of a bunch of DuPont cables and then you would have a case that this fits in. Make sure you always solder your regulator pin here. Either you short the middle to the EXT for the external AMS1117 or you short it to the INT and then it'll use your internal 3.3 volt regulator on the RP2040. You also have to make sure to set up these pins here. These are to select if you're getting the 3.3 volt or the 5 volts to your scanned I2C devices. I recommend putting some male pin headers and this style of pin cap or header jumper cap with the little handle on it so you can easily move it about. And then it is up to you if you want to socket it and put the board in. That, that means you can reuse the board for other things, but to me that kind of defeats the purpose. Or you can solder it directly to the board like this one here. And because I believe that this should be sitting on every enthusiast's workbench, I've designed a case in FreeCAD and a little bit of a valance and a holder for the OLED. So this thing should be at home on your workbench with all your other cool equipment. Now you can just use the base like so and screw it in, but I think it looks a lot neater if you put the trim panel like so. And that screws down with M3 by 10 screws. And then you mount your OLED afterwards. A little bit of a remote cable to make it easier to plug into. And the same M3 by 10 screws. And then your little jumper and you're off to the races. So this thing can sit on your bench permanence. You're not gonna be afraid to short anything and it is powered by the USB port right on the back there. I think this makes for a neat little case. So let's plug this thing in and I'll show you how easy it is to use. So it's just powered by the USB-C here and this is just plugged into my computer. So it's a fairly low power source. And then here I've got a uh, LCD driver, which is a nice squared C backpack, and it has the Stemma QT connector on it. And I'll just plug this in. There 
And there we go. It has found the I squared C address. And now I know this thing is 0x3f. So hex 3f address. And if I plug in this random OLED I've got here, so I can just plug it into these. Now, all of these connectors are in parallel. So you can connect them up in with these little flying leads, or you can make adapters. It's all up to you. Plug this in. And there we go, 0x3c. So we have found the I squared C address of this one as well. And so I think just having this on your workbench at all times is a way better solution than trying to breadboard something and then dismantling it when you're done. What do you think? So if you've made it to the end of this video, I will say I hope you go down into the description below and go pick up one of these PCBs from PCBWay. If not, I hope you put this all together on a breadboard and maybe keep it like that in permanence. Um, this thing is pretty awesome. It has great utility. If you're like me and you order stuff from AliExpress with dubious origins and no documentation. And on top of that, it is part of a modular workbench tool setup that I am making. So all the PCBs will be this size. This should all be compatible with standard OLEDs. And I'm pretty excited to see where the project is going. And you let me know if you're just excited as I am. All the links that you need to make this for yourself are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Got the hot plate going. Sorry if the focus is going to be bad. I had to change my setup for this, but uh, here it goes. 230 on the hot plate. Just going to pop that down. And now we're just going to wait for the heat to soak through. And I'll just use my tweezers to position the components where they need to go. They should get pulled by the surface tension either way. Yeah, you can see the capacitors moving there. I'm just going to nudge it into place. You guys have a better view than I do. So this capacitor here didn't cooperate. Just going to nudge it. There we go. It jumped into place. So yeah, the only problematic part is these Stemma QT connectors. They can be a little troublesome. So just give it little nudges. And once we are happy with that, just going to use the tweezers, pull it off the hot plate. And then we need to inspect our work once it cools.